Hello and welcome to another quick Wernerware video. I'm Daniel Werner and the topic for today is java.time.offsetDateTime. Specifically, I want to talk about the differences between zoned date time and offset date time. The easiest way to summarize this relationship, of course, is contained in the name. A zoned date time obeys the rules of time zones, whereas a simple offset date time is an offset from UTC time. You can also see this difference in the format supplied by the toString method in these two respective classes. So you have the UTC base time and then an offset to denote the amount of time from UTC that this particular time is offset by. In the case of zoned date time, we're merely adding the time zone. And you can see this in the timestamp format. It can be easy to miss this fact because most of the factory methods that are used to create a zoned date time do not require a time zone as an input. Instead, this information is inferred from the system clock. So logically enough, in the string format, we get everything that's in the offset date time plus a time zone. You may be thinking to yourself at this point, okay, great, so there's a time zone associated with the object. What does that mean for the behavior of the actual object when I'm using it? The first thing to consider is that, in fact, both of these classes are based on an instant which is itself based on epoch time, which is just an offset from the year 1970. Here I'm using a new instance to create a fixed clock, which I'm using to then create an offset date time and a zoned date time from the same instant. This will allow us to compare the two object types based on the same internal data. As you can see, the date and time are reported identically between the two, the only difference being the reported time zone, and this is because they are in fact based on the same instant. But look what happens when we decide to add time to each of these respective objects. The result is actually a different reported time. Here you can see that the offset of the offset date time object has remained the same, but that the offset associated with the zoned date time has changed from 5 to 4. Furthermore, you'll see that the actual epoch time associated with each object has diverged. What does this mean? Well, to help explain this, why don't we have these objects print out their local time without their timestamp and offset. And so, despite being based on different epoch times, these two objects report the same local time. This is the kind of distinction that leads to bugs in code in my experience because the distinction between adding six months to a zone date time as opposed to adding six months to an offset date time may be lost on some developers. The offset date time has a simpler scenario in mind where it just has to give the right day of the month, hour, and seconds in order to convert six months in the future. Whereas the zoned date time has the additional layer of questioning whether the hour is ahead or behind 
due to daylight savings time. As a user of an add months function, it's logical to look at the situation and expect the same date of the month, hour, and seconds to be on the resulting date and only have the month change and possibly the year. But there's that little nuance in there that catches you if you're not aware of it. This has been another WernerWare video. I hope you liked it and take a look at my other videos.